let's move on to core strength because I think this is such a huge topic in swimming. And really, it's only been in the last kind of 20 years that I've noticed core being a focus. It was certainly kind of catch oriented um in the 90s where it was like you know you gotta you gotta get your high elbow it was all high elbow type stuff and then you know they went then we went into kick driven strokes but now we're really connecting the the upper body and the lower body with the core and the core is such a huge focal point so talk to me about core strength i mean we could argue it all stems from the core and, and you just work center out and if you don't have position in your core your hips and shoulders don't move efficiently from a biomechanics standpoint if we look at your streamline and, and how you're shaped as a vessel moving through the water, if your core is distorted, your arms and legs are gonna be off, uh, the way you use them is gonna be off, your ability to produce force. And not to mention some of like the lower back discomfort that we see, um, you know, maybe swimmers being hyperextended and in this uphill position. So if you can really center your core, get your ribs stacked over your pelvis, get that aligned. If you imagine this like two blocks, your hips and shoulders are gonna be more mobile they're going to be stronger. You're going to be more streamlined. You're more efficient moving through the water. I kind of have a love hate with core training because I think a lot of people look at it as like sit-ups and crunches and like mm -hmm. a lot of this anterior chain crunching, flexing the spine, which can be fine, but it's really looking at it three-dimensionally, a 360 view. And we're looking for, uh, we're looking for the centered and stacked position. And you really just want this tall top body line and kind of this, this pillar strength. I was actually going to say that, you know, what is the core? What, what does it comprise of primarily, you think? Yeah, I mean, we could say chest to, chest to hips, chest to knees. Um, it's it's the, your center of mass, um, but your abdominals, your obliques, your lower back. Um, again, this 360 degree view. So if you're not tackling your core training from front, side and back, you, you could be imbalanced in that way. And, um, you know, going back to the swimmers, when we have a lot of maybe this posterior chain extension, um, they're going to be more in an uphill position. They're going to be creating drag. They might have discomfort in their back um, and their ability to produce force in their hips and shoulders might be off. Yeah, it's interesting that you kind of incorporate the obliques on the side here and also the lower back because it's not, you know, most people used to just think about kind of a six pack of like, oh, I've just got to get these six muscles here kind of bigger and stronger and that's my core. It's way beyond that, right? Yeah, it's all about being centered. It's about muscular balance. So Going back to taking a look at function, even some of these like high caliber Olympic level swimmers, we could take a look at that and maybe overdeveloped in one area, it's leading to compensations, injuries. So we can be smart and holistic about kind of rebalancing things. Um, they're going to be more efficient and performance definitely improves. And Dan, I used to do a lot of uh, core and stability work and I used to get really, really tight in these kind of, these, these muscles here that the physios used to kind of stick their thumbs in all the time and kind of lose. And it was like, oh my God, it was like the most painful thing that anyone could ever do to me. Yeah. But because I was working my core so much, they, they would really tighten up here. What, what are those muscles? Probably a psoas. Yeah, which psoas. Gets a lot of attention. If you've ever had that dug out, it's a uh, religious yep. experience. Um, psoas, yeah. But yeah, that anterior chain, arguably getting overused and is, is tight, but it's compensating for something else. So like if something is uh, too tight on the front, it means something slack on the back. So we really, we're just looking for balance. Okay. And if you find you're always like digging something out, getting it rubbed out, foam rolling, stretching, it just, if something's always tight or always weak, you know, other end of the spectrum, um, we, we want to take a look at balance and make sure that things are even. Uh, Cause when the body's in balance, it doesn't have these tightnesses and these weaknesses and uh, mm. yeah.